welcome to the Dental Eighteen Podcast. We're your hosts, Kira Dent and Dr. Mark Costas. Mark and I had this crazy idea that maybe we could combine a dentist and a team member's perspective because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. And Dental Eighteen Podcast was created. I'm a practicing dentist, a multiple practice owner, a dental performance coach, and the founder of the Dental Success Institute. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, biller, office manager, current practice owner, and international dental consultant. Mark and I don't just understand you, we are you. Our goal is to positively impact the world of dentistry by sharing our lessons learned from the road in hundreds of dental offices. Two perspectives, one mission, to help dental professionals reach their full potential. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Dental A Team Podcast. I'm Kira Dent. Today I've got Mark Costas with me, of course. Mark, how are you? Kira Dent. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. Today is our like busy, productive day, right? Yes, it always is a productive day. Are you kidding me? Especially, uh, especially when we get together because we don't waste any time. We definitely don't. So let's just dive right in because today is going to be a 10 minute tactical episode. We want it to be short, sweet, and to the point. And Mark has no idea what I'm about to ask him. So it's (laughs) going to be real fun. This is how I roll. I just surprised him, but we riffed really well together. It's an ambush. Mark, (laughs) it is an ambush because this one, um, one thing I was really concerned about being a podcast host was sometimes I feel like I ask questions and it's like maybe I know the answer and I'm not super engaged. And I never wanted to be that host because I think if I can genuinely ask questions that I really do want to know answers to. It really, it's a a better podcast. And so as I was thinking about getting on this one with you today, something I thought I really, really, really wanted to know is from a doctor's perspective, because I have you right now, a hundred percent all attention. What is like, so when you are in your practice and you're going about and you're super busy and it could be your office manager or your regional manager, what is like the dream office manager or regional manager from your perspective that like, like these things just get checked off. And then I'll give my perspective from my world of what like a dream doctor would be like for me. But I really want to go through of just like a couple quick highlights. So people know like, oh, this is what really just like jives. And my doctor's so excited. Like these are the things that really are paramount of the clear expectations. So as office managers, we're not running around like crazy trying to accomplish the thousands of things we're given every single day, but we can really hone in onto the key facts that really just, just make your life easier as a doctor. Can you repeat the question? I wasn't paying attention. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Please say you're lying. (laughs) Actually, that actually is a really, really good question because I have some very strong opinions about this. And, you know, there, there are people in an organization, uh, in any organization, um, and in any hierarchical, is that a word? Hierarchical structure, you know, uh, when you're looking at an organizational chart, you have direct mm-hmm. supervisors and then you have the CEO at the top. But in any hierarchy, there there are people that are kind of your C-suite people. Those are your those are your leaders across the board. And I I think that there are certain personality traits that the C-suite that the 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 department leads and the office managers and the supervisors, they have to kind of possess a certain number or a certain quality uh, versus the people that are below them that are, that are really good workers, but I call them like the soldiers, right? They, they get out Mm -hmm. and they do um, what you need them to do. They're very, very um, tactical and they're very reliable whatever you ask them to do, they're going to get it done to the T exactly the way that you want them to. Those are really great people to have in your organization. And everybody has to have those in the organization in order for your organization to run smoothly. The C-suite level people have to have that capacity and that personality trait in addition to being able to be problem solvers. Right. So Mm -hmm. if something happens, I mean, they have their lists, they have their protocols, they have the things that they have to get done every single day. But if there is a problem, if there is something that is going to require a decision, a difficult decision, I want my C-suite, my my um, supervisors to be able to handle those or at least present certain um, potential answers to a challenge as they present the challenge to me. Does that make sense? Yes, I do. Yes, absolutely. So and I agree with that. Yeah. So if you have if you have an office manager, right, and they and you say, um, 
Mrs. Jones is mad because there's a $116 um, balance on her account and she thought that she was completely paid up. Mrs. Jones uh, has been with us for 20 years and she has 16 family members that come to the office. I want my office manager to say, okay, um, I know that Dr. Costas values this this relationship. We're going to write off the $116. That is mm -hmm. somebody that I could trust. And that's somebody that has uh, the ability to, to problem solve and, and use common sense. If that person came to me and said, uh, Mrs. Jones um, uh, owes $116. So what I think we should do is uh, send her to collections. That is a person that isn't using their better judgment and they haven't thought through that particular scenario all the way through. And that for me wouldn't necessarily be a person that I would want in a management position. Or my favorite is when they come to you and they say, Hey, Dr. Costas, Mrs. Jones is really upset. What do you think I should do? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Give me five different options. I mean, if, if you can't come up with a decision, then say, here are th the top three options I think that we should do with Mrs. Jones and, and you pick the best one. Um, but you know, and why is that so important to you, Mark? Like dive into that a little deeper. Why? Because I think so often we're like, well, I'm coming. I want to make sure I'm doing it right. Like I want your approval, but why from your perspective, is that so important of a trait to possess, especially in your leadership team and your office manager? Yeah, because you're delegating out those types of decisions because there's such thing as decision fatigue, right? As a CEO of the practice, we are, for one, especially dentists that are the CEO, the practicing dentists and clinicians that are CEOs of their dental practice, we're having to make decisions all day long, big decisions about vendors we're going to use and um, treatment plans that we're, we're putting together and payment options and those sorts of things. And when we're bothered with little minutia all day long from, especially if you're a multiple practice owner, shoot, we have 75 five employees that work for us. If I had people that were unable to make decisions in managerial positions, I literally would be on the phone all day long, making little tiny decisions all day long. Those are the sorts of things that you really need your management team to be able to handle without your constant input. Absolutely. I love that so much because even office managers think of your team. Are they coming to you, bombarding you all the time with little things and you're the bottleneck of the practice. I mean, I was just in a practice the other day and this office manager is spent to the wazoo because every <laughs> single person in that practice, that is a place, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but every person in that practice came to this office manager with simple, simple decisions that they couldn't make on their own. Like, hey, how am I supposed to get here in the morning to be on time? Those were the actual questions that were coming to that office manager. And, and at that point it was, you need to spin that around and have your team say, you know, well, what do you think would be the solution or what do you think is the best option? And doctors, if your office manager is the type of person who doesn't have the confidence or maybe who hasn't been empowered to make these decisions, like Mark was saying, put that back on them, put that spin back of, Hey, Kara, great question. What do you think is the solution? What do you feel would be the best appropriate action? And then you doctors and office managers aren't having to come up with all the solutions and your team is learning. I need to come up with solutions because they're going to ask me every single time you're training your team to really help you out with those smaller things that they can do on their own. I good, really, good I, point, Mark. yeah, I just, I really, really like that. I mean, it's, um, I love the word that you used, empowerment. Empowerment is so huge. And in our organization, we feel as though everybody should be empowered. So everybody has the ability to make a $300 decision. So if, if, if there is, you know, um, Mrs. Jones or Mrs. Smith or whoever it happens to be, um, if they are irate and um, it is something that whether or not we were right, I mean, Mrs. Mrs. Smith can be completely wrong. If we value that, relationship enough, everybody on our team from front desk, sterilization, um, tech or office manager, everybody has the empowerment. Everybody has the decision making, uh, latitude to be able to write off $300 or spend $300 mm -hmm. on something that they think would make the office more, uh, streamlined or efficient. Everybody is empowered to do that. And if you have a strong enough onboarding process and everybody's clear about the culture and what your core values are in your practice, $300 is nothing. Uh, there's companies like Zappos um, that 
spend, you know, six weeks onboarding somebody and spend, you know, thousands of dollars getting them all trained up. And at the end of the training process, they say, all right, I'm giving you a $5,000 check to quit. And the people that don't take the check, and some people do, the people that don't take the check, they know that they fit their core values and their culture. And they know that they'll make the right decisions and they can empower them to make really, really valuable decisions for the company. And I think that that is, I love that because as I know, I was sometimes scared to make decisions in the company, um, but I was actually just talking to my leadership team and the companies that I run. And I was talking to them this morning, we had our call and they said, Kira, one of the things that we really appreciate is that you have empowered us to make decisions where we can actually fail successfully. We know that we can make a decision. They're safe. And if we don't, they're there's, safe. There's a level <laughs> of safety, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany, Tiffany today, she's like, you know, it's kind of like there's always an like auto save. It's like Google Docs. Like I can never mess it up because <laughs> there's always a solution. Like yeah. she's like, I know that we can always fix the problem. And I really think, Mark, as we were going through this, of I do believe that this is how office managers, doctors, leadership teams can really free themselves by empowering their team giving them the ability to fail successfully and, and helping your team to feel empowered, that will eliminate that decision fatigue. And I think that that's what will create that C-suite position like you were talking about of taking the initiative, being intentional, and then empowering the team with solutions and having that mindset. Like think of that type of a culture as opposed to the micromanaged coming to you for every single question to where you're exhausted up the wazoo like that other office manager. And wazoo is a place. Wazoo is a place. So there you have it. So Mark, give us a quick recap from your side of exactly what that that dream, like the thing that that office manager can really do to help take things off your plate in a quick 30 second recap. Yeah. So quick 30 second recap. They're great soldiers that follow instructions to a T. We need those types of people. The people that are in managerial or uh, supervisory uh, positions on your team, we want them to be able to be empowered and be able to make decisions. And you have to have a strong enough onboarding process so that they understand what your core values are, what your what your purpose is for your practice, what your culture is, so that they can make those really important decisions and not bombard you with tiny little uh, minutia and, and, and increase your decision fatigue as a CEO <laughs> throughout the day. Awesome. I love it. And Mark, I know you're a busy man. So I'm going to take the, um, I'll be empowered and say, thanks so much for being on the show today. I know you've got a lot to do and I always appreciate your insights and your, your wisdom that you're able to share with our audience. So thanks for joining me today, even in the midst of your busy day. Oh, thank you, Kara. It's always a pleasure talking to you and your audience. We'll talk to you soon. (laughs) Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Thanks everyone. And we will catch you next time on the Dental A Team Podcast. That wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Aid Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time.